three, two, one. Welcome to the Metal Voice. First time on the show, Guernica. Ooh, that's awesome. Mancini. Wow. <laughs> Pronounce that really nice. Wow. Guernica. <laughs> it's, it's important to get the name right. My real name is Dimitrios, uh-huh. but I just go Jimmy because it just makes life easier, right? Yeah. Dimitrios. That's not that hard, though. It's a cool name. Yeah. Very cool, cool name. But but when you're like uh, eight years old in elementary school, it's not as cool as you think. <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, I feel like, I guess I could relate to that. I have a lot of nicknames. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's a cool name. I think it's a cool name. It's. Thank I, you. I think we're in an age of cool names. That's what we want to, you know, we're tired of the Jimmys, we're tired of the Johns and the Marys, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So, okay, I'm going to start things off with this. Yeah. And we'll go back into your history. So here, this shirt means nothing now. <laughs> it's a collector's <laughs> edition. I feel like a, I feel like a fool. No, <laughs> what did I do? Not. I mean, that, I mean, that's part of the band's history, and that's beautiful. But yeah, it's a collector's edition, right? It people, is, definitely. people from here on end will say, "I'll give you a thousand dollars for that shirt." <laughs> oh my god, that, that what an honor it would be if that that was true. <laughs> so, uh, just so you know, I saw you. Uh, I saw Thunder Mother in Montreal, Canada when you're on your tour with the Scorpions and my wife, you know, she really liked you guys. And she goes, yeah. you know, you better buy a shirt, buy a shirt, buy a shirt to support them. So that's what she did. So Thank this you. was a positive. This was a positive. I'm just making yeah. a joke. <laughs> no, no, I understand. I completely understand. And tell your wife, uh, thank you. We appreciate it. <laughs> a okay. lot. All right. The big news is three fourths of the band disappeared from Thunder Mother, but we'll get to that. Okay. Yeah. Well, let, let's go back in time a bit because Mm-hmm. For people who don't know you, they may want to get to know you, right? Yeah. And absolutely. at 14 years old, is this true? At 14 years old, you went to uh, California seeking the dream of being a rock and roll star. Is that it? No, I think those numbers have been a little mixed up. At 14 12. years old, I, <laughs> yeah, as a toddler, I went to pursue <laughs> my rock and roll dreams. No. <laughs> uh, when I was 14, I started my first band. That's mm-hmm. true. Then I moved to LA when I was 20 oh, to go to college. Yeah, it's a big difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I mean, I've always been I have been singing my entire life and you know, trying, you know, forming different bands and trying all different styles and blah blah blah. But uh yeah, I moved to Los Angeles when I was 20. And you walk off the the plane or you get off the plane, you go to the taxi, you go, this wasn't like in the movies. This is a really big city, right? Yeah, and I moved from a, a, a town. I'm from Lund. It's a university town here in Sweden, and it's very small. Mm-hmm. Uh, and moving from Lund and not having any other experiences to Los Angeles was quite overwhelming. It took me about a year to get used to it all and, you know, get into the L.A. scene kind of thing. <laughs> And, and I mean, you're okay. I know the Swedish, they're very, they're super bilingual. The Swedish people, uh, you know, the English is taught in the school. So your English was is pretty good. Like I wouldn't even know. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I mean, I make, I make a, now my English is going to start getting worse and worse just because of that. No, but uh, I do make an effort. I, uh, I like talking. It's one of my favorite things to do. So knowing different languages or a little bit of here and, you know, so you can communicate with a lot of people is, uh, I think that's really important. Yeah, okay. But I'm just trying to say that you have a good command of the English language. Thank you. Yeah, I you do. Know, the, the, yeah, the, yeah. the thing is that growing up, I knew Spanish really well, too. I was fluent in Spanish. Uh, I mean, being that my parents are from Uruguay. But um, I lost my Spanish more and more. Like, I understand it really well. But English is so much easier for me because I've, I've I've literally never lived in a Spanish-speaking country. But I've, I, I mean, I lived in L.A. for four and a half years. So that... You know, yeah, it definitely helps. So I need to move somewhere where I can speak Spanish and force myself to, yes, you know, learn it again. <laughs> Spain. <laughs> yes, maybe. <laughs> All right. So you're in LA or you're in yeah. California mm-hmm. and you're trying to make your way there. And I guess you hook up with Jeff Young. Is that it? Or is that there's a little bit story before? Just quickly. Just Yeah, yeah, before. quickly. Oh, I'm going to make. We're my, not going to go through your whole history here. You know, when <laughs> you lost your first best, tooth. My or... answers are always like, ah, so long. But yes, uh, once I graduated from MI, I think Jeff uh, found out about me somehow, like through common friends or something um, and reached out. And we did this like uh, 
uh, thing project together that he called Souls on Eleven, and we did that for like a I don't know, over a year or so. I just think that that project didn't really have like it wasn't going anywhere really, and mm-hmm. then I had to move back to Sweden, and so that kind of like ended that, you know. Collaboration, but, but, but that's your resume, right? You get a, yeah. something new, a new experience, exactly, right? A, 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 and you take and you learn from that, and he learns from that, and whatever the case may be, right? Yeah, so. definitely, definitely. All right, so okay, so now you're with Jeff Young, you're back to Sweden. You, yes. You're the dream, the Hollywood dream is over. Is that what you're thinking in your mind? Yeah, I'm like in full on depression mode, as you really? are when you have to move back to your parents and just feel like a complete loser. <laughs> Is that how you um, felt? No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. I mean, I, I was in LA for, like I said, four and a half years. From Basically, from I was 20, I turned 25 in LA, and then I had to move back. And a lot of things happened throughout those years. Like, you learn about yourself, and you grow as a person, and all these things. Um, and then having to move back to Sweden and not being a successful musician or anything of the sort, it was kind of heartbreaking. But I mean... I never give up and I I kept working. So I started a new band like within four months of being home. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I didn't l- let that stop me. And through that band, I then met Philippa. All right. So, so okay. So you met Philippa. Is it mm-hmm. Philippa or Philippa? Philippa. Philippa. Yeah. All right. So you meet her and, and, and again, right? Connection from connection yeah. and networking, right? And, and and how big is Thunder Mother at this point in Sweden? Uh, I didn't know of them to be completely honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, I my the guitar player in my the band that I was in at the time, he told me about them. So then I looked them up on Facebook and Instagram and blah blah, and I saw that they were doing cool shows and it looked like a really cool band and. I love the idea of it being an all female band. I thought the whole concept was just amazing and yeah so that's kind of what i knew of them but then um yeah i i don't know where to go from there but yeah i didn't know i wasn't like a huge fan or anything because i i didn't know of the band but but were they i guess my point is were they that was there a buzz in sweden about this band at the time i i think so yeah i definitely i feel like they they had reached uh definitely a buzz some sort of success they had played uh, some cool festivals and uh, yeah, done some cool things already. So they had already done like when I joined the band, the band was already a few steps ahead of me career wise. So they had definitely done some things. Uh, yeah, but that's about it. They weren't living off of music or anything. No, no. Yeah. yeah. Like most people. So, yeah. okay. So you, you audition, right? You audition. Yeah. She, she, she hears you. She loves you. You got a great voice. I mean, it's, it's obvious, you. right? It's obvious. Thank you. I'm sure many people have told you this. Um, you join a band and I'm assuming, I mean, the, 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 the company or the band name or the trademark now it's Philippa's right. You're coming in as a session, right? Like a, a, a paid no. member, a salaried, like what is no, it? No, nothing. No, 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 not a, none, none of that. Uh, we, uh, all the members that have been part of the band have always been um, told that they're part of a band. And that's the premise that you join the band and you, everyone has been told that you're an equal member. As soon as you become like a, you're in Thunder Mother, you're then uh equal member. And with everything that that entails, like all the work behind the scenes, as well as on stage and yeah. Okay, but there's there's two there's two things we have to separate here. There is yeah. we're a democracy. We're working together. We're writing music together. We're sharing social media together. Yeah. And then there is like the registration of the name Thunder Mother. It's under whose name, right? Is it under yeah. a company name or is that under Philippa's name? Uh, it's under Philippa's name. Okay, that's what I mean. Like, th- there's a company. I'm not yeah. sure if there is a co- there's a company. Uh, that I think she it. might start one now. That's uh, we were about to do one, start one together before Christmas, and I think that was a catalyst to everything that has happened now. But uh, I definitely think that she's doing that now. But no, it was registered in her night in her name, and um, it was registered 2019. We found out, uh, like globally, uh, which was strange finding out now retrospect. Because me and Emily had been in the band for two years then. 
Uh, so and, and, and when you join the band, I guess the premise, and I'm building up to you know yeah, where you are course, to yeah. under have an understanding, right? And feel free if you don't want to answer, you don't have to answer. I'm I'm yeah. just gonna ask. Yeah. Um, you're joining the band, and Philippa saying, "Listen, uh, the other girls I was with, they kind of bailed, they quit, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and was there any reasons why they bailed or they quit? Do you know or not? I know now, but I didn't know then. At okay. that time, I was so just uh, all consumed in me getting this opportunity that I didn't think of it and more than, okay, yeah. they had problems. What band does have problems? You know, and I yeah. didn't really go in depth with it. But um, mm -hmm. now I definitely have a relationship with uh, a lot of the girls from the previous lineups. And uh, uh, yeah, I've, I've heard their stories and they're very much similar to my story. So there's nothing unique happening at all. But you're saying, you know what? Okay, they left. Here's my opportunity. Whatever, right? You know. I, exactly. I mean, right. I, yeah, I definitely. Plus, I'm very, um, I'm a very loyal and very like trust. What's the word when you trusting you just tr trusting person? Yeah. Trust, to a, yeah. That's yeah, okay. Like, That's good to be like that. I don't think it is anymore. Maybe because it's put me in a lot of weird situations. But I definitely. Um, believe what people tell me and so do I you know yeah but it's weird because you don't <laughs> yeah I don't I, yeah like usually you yeah, don't have let me tell you something let me, let me, you know in your personal life it's good to believe what people tell you because you're giving them the benefit of the doubt and that's yeah. okay in business life I get what you're saying in business life you have to be a little more cautious yeah and I and I haven't been and I had to learn that that's a tough lesson that I've had to you know learn uh but yeah. So you joined Thunder Mother and yeah. on the premise that, you know, of course, now you're saying, OK, this is something else on my resume and you know, yeah. things are looking good. The band's not as big. It's just starting yeah. off. Right. It's starting off. So yeah. it's obvious it, it's going to have member changes because it's starting off. You join a band and on the premise, again, I'll say it like you're more or less a democracy, an equal yeah. member. Are you writing together with Philippa or she already has the songs? Uh, well, we joined the band. Well, me and Emily, who quit now, uh, mm -hmm. we both joined at the same time, 2017. And uh, when we joined, Philippa already had material for uh, the album Thunder Mother. So mm -hmm. we weren't really able to, you know, have a much of a say in the creative part, which I also thought was really, at that time, nice, because then we can get the ball rolling quickly with the new members and the new sound or whatever uh so i i have like like this much writing you know credit which is understandable album. it's understandable yeah and i, I never even in. to me i never questioned that i didn't think it was anything weird i just told her that for the next album i really want to be part of the songwriting because i enjoy writing music as well and uh, yeah that mm -hmm. was it so i didn't think of it i didn't take that as anything bad or negative it was just like I'm new here. I know I'm the new guy. I'm respecting my the position because I'm very. I don't know why I'm. Maybe well, I'd be like that too. Any new, when you ever yeah. start a new company working somewhere, you want to be yeah. respectful of your environment. Yeah, like that's yeah. It's weird. I I feel like it's like it's such a generational thing because I know like just an example when I used to work in stores and like people that are like so much younger than me come in and they're very like entitled from the beginning where it's I'm kind of grown up to be like you respect like the the boss and you you try to like be the best employee you can be and be very like just um all around good and do whatever you can to you know have the best team or whatever um so that's kind of the mentality that I joined the band in we're a democracy and we're going to do everything in our power to get to where we want to get but one little detail about like the beginning phases is that me and Emily joined and we brought in a lot of new energy. Like we, my dream has always been to play arenas and do, I still want to play rock and Rio. Like there's a lot of things that I, I still am dreaming about accomplishing as a musician and mm -hmm. preferably in a band um, that we brought in that energy. Whereas Filippa had already reached the the level of success that she wanted when we joined the band. Like she was, Really, and there's nothing wrong or bad with that, but we kind of like um, motivated. You're on different her to levels. You're, you're, you're basically, you know? basically, you're saying you wanted this, but she kind of wanted this. 
yeah when we joined she was just completely satisfied with being at uh, that Club level levels. and yeah. there's com- and and I, I just uh, yet again because people keep misunderstanding everything i say i want to be clear with i don't think that there's anything wrong with that but no. that me and emily were a humongous part because Philippe has even told us this of like pushing it towards what it actually became okay yeah. So you're hungry. That's what you're saying. You're more, yeah, very hungry. And, and there's very... nothing wrong with Philippa if she wants to stay where she no, is or how she is. No. There's nothing wrong with that. That's that's all good. I'm not going to bad mouth her either. We're just saying it like it is, right? Yeah. And, without, and even without her being here, we're just saying what happened. Your experience. That's it. Yeah. All right. So now, if when you used to play gigs, when you used to play mm-hmm. shows, was it split equally the money? Like, okay, Always. let's say you got you got a thousand dollars. Already got two fifty. You know. Yeah. It, it was always split equally, right? Uh, as far as I know, I mean, I haven't really seen any paperwork as I'm I'm an idiot, so I never looked into whatever, you know. But as far as I believe, we always shared everything equally. The merchandise, the, um, you know, I got royalties from that album that I played on, like all these things. So all that stuff has been completely normal and fair since day one. Okay, so you've been paid. It's not like those situations where musicians haven't been paid and they go, where's yeah. my money? But we where's did money? we did do a huge thing. Like when we joined the band, we actually paid off a huge debt of like 90, I think it was about 90,000 crowns. I don't know how much that is, nine, like $9,000 uh, to the previous management because we were, that's like how loyal and, you know, solidaric we are when we are we part if we're part of a band we didn't like think twice about taking care of the the baggage from before we just did that so i remember the dead daisy store i think we all made a thousand dollars from those two weeks you know of that first tour because and it wasn't from the show as it was from like the merchandise so yeah (laughs) was there any and i'm gonna help you here too was there any partnership like so in other words you've agreed to come on board you and the other girls in a form of a verbal partnership is what you're saying yeah there was no signed paperwork saying we're all part of this company called mm, Thunder no Mother. that was never uh, ev- that was every time that was brought up just so everyone would have like the security of that it was kind of brushed off and then something would happen and you wouldn't think about it anymore. And then you would get br- bring it up again and it would just be something that, you but, know. But I, but I wouldn't blame Philippa either if she had the name and the company before because she's kind of work. she was working it, right, for a few years already. So yeah, and you, 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 couldn't, you couldn't blame her for that, right? I do not blame her at all for that. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't. I just want to know, how, so you paid off a debt. You've come into this verbal agreement of some sort of partnership. Yeah. Right? Did, was there a company registered that, you know, that, that when you, when you were booking shows, it was with the company, not the, no, or we have, we've had booking agencies that take that. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, everyone has their own, everyone in Thunder Mother has their own company. So when it was time to, you know, get paid, Mm. like either our management took all the money or there's, there's never been a Thunder Mother company. It's always been like, I don't know what the name is over there, but like the individual companies. Yeah, so you're you're you you create your own uh, sole proprietary <laughs> proprietary proprietary ship, whatever they call it. Yeah, something and, like that. So you create your own little companies. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. So you're in Thunder Mother. The you're hungry for success. You're building the success. You could see that you're on top of tour buses, playing during COVID. Was that was? Yeah, fun. we did that. That was yeah, pretty, we, uh, you know, it's like, what the hell are they doing? Because you Swedes, yeah. you had no lockdown over there, right? No, we didn't have any lockdown, but they did, like, there were no venue venues open. So everything that had to do with culture was shut down, but everything else was more or less pretty normal, like, always. Um, so, yeah, we we got creative and did the the touring, on, on, like, on top of the fire truck and stuff like that. <laughs> Whose idea was that? Uh, I think it was um it was actually our, our previous manager. He he had that idea of doing the fire truck, and then in Germany they had a ton of different creative ideas of you know keeping the music alive. Yeah, uh, yeah. So 
Okay, so slowly you're getting successful, you know, you're getting more traction, you know, people are digging your voice, they're digging the music. And to me, it looks like a, the whole band was really contributing to that sort of uh, success at the time, right? I think right? so too. I think so too. It was a complete, it was a 100% team effort. I don't think we would have reached the success that we have reached um, if it wasn't for all four of us putting in the time and energy. Or I would say me, Filippa, and Emily, because we've had, I feel like we've had like a round door with the bass players. They've been not, mm. it hasn't been the easiest thing for us to keep bass players around. But us three have been solid for six years. And yeah. Okay. So now as you're, <laughs> of course, it's obvious, like brothers and sisters, they argue and there, there's always the, was there already signs of, you know, you guys aren't getting along? you know, two people, two ladies against two ladies or three against one or, you know, that's what happens in, in any family, right? People start yeah. taking sides, decisions family, about music. I I mean, I want to keep it light here, but uh, definitely we, me and Philippe have always had, we're like opposite. We, we stand on different sides of things, but we've always been able to um, find ways of, working through it in a sense like obviously we were able to tour give a me a small together. example of something like that like oh i don't like this song or leave that song in the album i don't like that song in the album or should we play in this country or not that like, was actually example. never me and Philippa never had those kind of issues um uh, it was more it, i can give you an example of like our drummer and Philippa. they always were um he like butting heads in the studio about um drum beats to a particular song but it was like that's still like a normal thing yes. to argue about you know drummer guitar player um i think i've i've, I've been pretty chill when it comes to those things i so I you're saying mus musically of... everything was cool like the yeah. regular the regular sort of inspiration or uh, critique uh when creating songs which is a normal thing for bands yeah. right yeah yeah definitely yeah did all the band contribute in writing back then uh well yeah well they, they gave their own like the drummer say okay i want to contribute this and bassist this and that or like uh, yeah definitely everybody contributed in some way or another to the songs and the albums yes i would okay. yeah kind of yeah look there's always somebody with the main idea but everybody i else mean we worked with in, the right? we wrote songs with the um, soren so for example me yeah. soren and uh, Filippa wrote Driving in Style. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was a normal session. We were there brainstorming, you know, blah, 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 normal. And that's kind of how we did all the albums. But not everyone was present all the time for the different sessions. Oh, well, I think me and Filippa were. But uh, you know what I mean? Like, it was just, yeah. Okay. Everyone contributed so with their different parts and, yeah. When did you find or did you feel like, you know what, something's not right here? Or maybe you didn't. At what point? Like last year, two years ago, or it was always there or never? Um, there must have been a vibe. Like you're saying, you know what, something just doesn't feel right anymore. It's a tough question to answer. Um, we all get a sense of something's wrong, right? Yeah. Um, I'd, I, I would say like this, that, um, it's never been great for me. Uh, and I'm, and it's, it's been tough, six tough years. Uh, really? but, uh, yeah, hundred percent. But, uh, regardless of that, I, I don't regret anything. I've, I've still had amazing experiences with the band and yeah, I wouldn't take anything back because I've I've grown and I've become the singer that I am. And there's so many positives to that. So even though it's a, it has been a very bumpy ride, I still think that it's been a beautiful ride and something that's that nice. I would. I don't know, because it, it does teach you a lot about yourself and you grow as a human. So that's why I'm kind of like. Even, you know, when you when you go through something that's tough and hard for you. You can either choose to learn from it and try to, you know, take yeah. some, you know, do something positive with it. And that's kind mm -hmm. of what I'm, I'm, I'm aiming to do for myself. Uh, so. So, so you're saying you were, I wouldn't say you were miserable, but you were unhappy for like six years. 
not a hundred percent not happy. It's been going up and it, it's been like this. It could have been better. Uh, you're saying it could have been better. Is that it? It, it definitely? I've I've questioned how my my dream of doing music and uh, everything that I love so much and you know hold so dear it had had to be so tough. But then I, in my mind, I've always thought that, oh, but it's probably the pay, the price you pay for getting these experiences or, you know, whatever, like, but I, I, I think that um, it doesn't necessarily have to be that, but, you know, like anything in life, nothing is going to be happy and roses all the time. You, you go through things, just like you mentioned families and stuff, like it's normal, uh, but how yeah, old are I definitely. You? How old are you? How old are you? If you don't mind me. I asking. just turned thirty six. Wow, I thought you were like twenty six. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> young skin. So no, no, there's yeah. definitely you know uh, when you say that you worked in a store, they're younger. Okay, I get it. I get it. I thought you were like yeah. twenty six. I wouldn't. Even yeah, well, thank 36. you. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. I always um, used to work uh, as a salesperson, like in different clothing stores and stuff like that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, while pursuing music 100%, because that's just been my, 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 my entire goal for life since I, my entire adult life. So I, I've always kind of just, just got jobs to pay the yeah. bills or whatever, but music has been my. For my sure. Thing. Okay. So you're, you're. And this is when I saw you. So now you've hooked up with the Scorpions. I'm assuming, you know, it was a management buy-on, I would assume. I don't know. Like, no. I'm guessing. So it, they, it wasn't a buy-on of any sort? No? No, it, no, it wasn't a buy-on. Because out of nowhere, this band comes and they're on like this major tour, right? So that, that's, if that wasn't a buy-on, then that was a huge accomplishment. We have the same booking agent. Still, uh, even people with the same booking agents, they put bands next to big bands, you know, usually. Uh, I mean, it wasn't like we made a lot of like we, we didn't make enough money. I mean, it kind of I, I it barely covered our the, the nightliner, but we yeah, we didn't pay to get on there. No. OK, was, so that's good. Yeah, actually, like, that means a lot, actually. Yeah, that it's a, a huge uh, accomplishment. And we are very proud of that. Like, I don't think Thunder Mother as a band has ever done a buy on. You know what? Now that you're telling me this, I think it's massive what you guys did. Yeah. It, it, it's pretty big. I mean, to go Thank on you. a, like, I know Queensryche was opening for the Scorpions. I mean, and they're not a small potatoes band either, right? No, they're, not at all. So here you guys, you guys are playing. What did it feel like going on stage in front of like ten to 15,000 people? That's pretty big. For me, it was, it, it was like, um, experience something i've been dreaming of for so long like it was so huge for me it was like yeah it's a dream come true really uh like i've always dreamt of being able to play big stages like that and for big audiences too and also feeling the love from the people you know like because unfortunately i feed off the energy of the crowds and the crowds were amazing and it was just yeah, it was a highlight of the whole tour. I mean, obviously performing is always a highlight for me, but um, yeah, I, I it was just overwhelming. And I was really sad the last day of the tour because I was like, I wonder if we're, maybe I was having premonitions, I don't know, but I was kind of feeling like, I wonder if I'm ever going to be able to get to experience this again, um, which I hope I will. Uh, but yeah, it was just, amazing and i'm forever grateful to uh, our booking agent chris dalton at caa and the scorpions for taking a chance on us um yeah it was did, did, did you did you sit down and have coffee with klaus no we didn't i didn't get a chance to do that really because when when we were gonna um, we were gonna have dinner with them they asked us to go for dinner uh we actually both me and philippa were ha had colds so we call them up and like, we're sick right now. Um, can we reschedule? And then there wasn't any more times on the tour to do it, unfortunately. And the idea was to get to do it now on the German tour. But obviously, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to be on there. So I'm hoping that Klaus is still have heard through the grapevine how appreciative I am and how I forever like so you didn't really get up. even to chance to talk to them or no we all? did hello hello maybe 
Okay. No, we did. I don't know. There's a really fun video. They came in on the second day of the uh, date of the tour and uh, said hi to all of us. And they were really lovely. And then we had another, a few weeks later, we did a photo shoot type thing with them. Mm -hmm. It's not like I had like a conversations in depth. I was just like, hi, ah, like being super nerdy and not cool. Um, it was tough, you know, because you, you meet them so quickly and you're like, holy shit this is Klaus, you know, or <laughs> this, is, this is Scorpions. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've talked to Mickey D quite a lot, a lot, and he's super nice and awesome dude. And, um, well, actually, I did talk to Matthias too on the last, I, I, I was in um, his dressing room and talked to him and his wife after the show, and they were telling me how much they really enjoyed having us on the tour and, um how how much they really wanted us for the whole European tour as well, which was that's such nice. an honor and mind blowing and huge. So I'm, that's something I'm gonna take with me forever. That they really respected us and enjoyed what we you know did, which was really cool. But I didn't get to talk so much to Klaus because Klaus is more he doesn't uh, socialize. You don't want to talk either, right? He wants to. He's got his voice, right? Yeah, exactly. But we did share the stage on the last show, and it was just really. You sang uh, a song together? Is that what it Well, we, we were all brought up on Rocky Like a Hurricane when we played oh. in Vegas. Yeah. See, I didn't know that. And I had Klaus like um uh monitor sound in my ears, and I was supposed to like sing with him, and I was like, I'm like the biggest nerd. So for me, it was like very awkward because we didn't really get much information, and I also don't want to like step on his toes and be like, right, like go up and take the spotlight. <laughs> I'm just gonna like Hey, hey, Push him aside and just take the mic. Yeah, no. <laughs> Plus, I mean, I'm I'm like stature, like I'm just such a big person compared to him. Uh, so it, I just tried to like back off and be like, doo, 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 like yeah, he must be like five five or five four, right? He, he him, uh, Klaus, yeah, yeah probably. I'm five that, eight. Yeah. Wear platforms. So I'm like probably like five ten on stage or five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know exactly. We do centimeters here, but um, yeah, I'm pretty. <laughs> Okay. I'm a bit, I'm a bit so, bigger than him. Was there anything you want to, uh, you know, any cool experience other than what you just mentioned about the scorpions that, wow, I never knew that. I never knew that about the scorpions. Oh, uh, we did find out some fun stuff, but I don't think I can share it. Well, I mean, shareable. I'm not saying unshareable. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't want to know the color of his underwear or anything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just joking. Uh, no, but, uh, I don't I don't I don't know right. what else to tell you. It was just like okay. an amazing. It was just an amazing tour and we got to see so many cool venues and I mean, I did have a, a, a in well it wasn't it, it might not be like the funnest story, but I did right before the show in LA, I had a little accent with my monitor, so it was someone stepped on them, so I did that whole show not hearing myself. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. That's very impressive. Yeah, it's not easy I, to I do. think so too. I mean, I managed to get through that. So that was pretty cool. But then it was really nice because Mika D told me that every time he plays in LA, it's like a curse, like something weird happens with the instruments or something. Because I playing the forum was huge for me. I mean, obviously, I, I've seen Prince, one of my favorite. Because you were there before. You were there before in Los Angeles ago, and then you left, and you left so exactly. sad. And now you're coming like, back as a hero, right? Exactly. <laughs> and I get to play fucking this legendary <sighs> venue, and right. and my nerves were crazy. And then I can't hear myself, and I need to go up and just smack a smile on my face and be like, "Yeah, let's do this." And then. I did, and it went well, and then, yeah, it was a traumatic right. experience. <laughs> to, to me, it sounds like whatever, you know, arguments you may or may not have, the experience just overwhelmed anything else, right? So, yeah, you, know, if you were disputing. That's, that's how it, uh, that's, uh, at least that's how it's been for me. Like, music comes first, and taking care of the band and the brand, I guess you could say, has been so much more important than taking care of uh, however I'm feeling or any, like I, I've just been like on, you know, third, fourth place. I didn't really care. Uh, I don't know if that's like the healthiest or the most mature way of dealing with things. So that's on me, something I need to learn. But um, 
yeah, I, I would never like the band was my everything. All right. So here's the <laughs> shocker of all shockers now, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, you're telling me all this amazing stuff and us as fans, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to see you guys and we're going, oh my God. And, and, it, and it's new to a lot of people. Even my wife, she didn't know Thunder Mother. She was, oh, Thunder Mother, what a fun mm -hmm. name, you know? <laughs> and she saw you guys, she thought you're amazing. And my friends of friends of friends, everybody thought you guys were really, you know, this is a band coming out of nowhere, just really, you know, with the energy, the momentum. Yeah. And then you're no longer in the band. It's like, what the heck is going on here? It's like this shirt went from twenty to thirty dollars to five hundred dollars because you're no longer in the band, right? Everybody wants a cop one of these now. What's going yeah. on? What's going on? What's going? I mean, so, the statement said it all, really. I, I know, but you got an email, a dismissal email. Is that it? Yeah, your time is over. All right. Now let's get into a let's get into a law here. And okay. I'm I'm gonna I'm were you gonna warned? Be upfront here. I've been uh, having a really really bad tough day today, so I don't want to go into much. But yeah. Let me explain to you something. Don't don't be upset. I'm gonna tell you because you brought the band to where it was. Thank you, and I, I, that's crazy to me to and, hear and that, that's I super, never saw it like you. That brought the band let me the first thing people always say is what the voice is like what is the singer like what is the energy from the singer okay you brought the band there so you sh that's a huge accomplishment you brought the band to the scorpions not to say the other girls didn't play a role too i'm not diminishing their role. no they're amazing they're okay. really talented and i i'm really proud to have had them as my bandmates yeah. <laughs> all of them actually <laughs> but but you see for me it doesn't sit well because sorry if you went to work at a clothing store in canada yeah and i'm I'm assuming the same thing in sweden you know first you get a warning right you get a verbal warning right mm -hmm. then you get another verbal warning and then they go okay we've given you verbal warnings here's a written warning you're no longer working for us as a as a salary person i would to just get a dismissal email just like that and again, I don't know the whole story without any warnings. I don't know. I mean, I don't think anyone will ever hear the real story uh, ever. I mean, unless I release like a biography in 10 years or something. Maybe maybe that's a good <laughs> idea. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I don't I, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, it's I think it was shocking for all of us because I would have never. Can she do this legally? That's what I'm asking you. Oh, legally. Yeah. Um, Yes, because she owns the band. No, she owns nah, the name. Wait, 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 wait. That's where I was getting to before. Okay, you're working in a clothing store. They can't yeah. just, you can't just walk into the clothing store and saying you're fired for no reason or, you mm -hmm. know, unless you stole or you did something yeah, serious. Exactly. Right? Which I haven't done. Uh, and which you haven't done. You've only no. demonstrated that, you, to me, from a legal aspect, from just the information that you're telling me, I can't, I, I don't know the whole story, so I won't judge it. No, but it doesn't sound like it was actually a legal dismissal. So you might want to look into that. Yeah, no, I, 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 I don't think there's anything that we can do besides what we have done. And uh, if she called you back today, would you go back to the band? So it was all wrong. I, I, don't, I don't think I could. No, it hurt. Too not much, now. Huh? Not not now. I feel like. Just like uh, Emily said in a previous interview, like the betrayal is just beyond it's like i don't know i would have never taken it this far but you know that's just how people were you warned people. were you warned prior were no. you saying listen if you don't do this you're out of the band or if you don't do this you're out of the band no because that's not something that you can say to someone when you're a democracy it's like you know you can you you can just no i don't no never never well, I mean, you're working in a clothing store. I know, but you can't you can't compare the two because it's Why like not? I mean, I guess you could, but at the same time, it's impossible because it's like a band dynamic is so much more different and could be so much more infected and there's no protection for musicians or uh I guess like if anyone listening starting a band now, be smart have contracts set up even though it feels silly 
initially. Like we are going to do that now with the girls. We but, love each other. Yeah, yeah. We're really good friends, but we've learned our lesson. So we're going to set up like a, a band agreement, like now day one of our beginning of this new band, because it's like, there's no point in, in not having any type of security. Just so you know, verbal is also uh is an agreement as well that verbal agreements with witnesses are also I mean, you can listen there's a million interviews where we're all believing and saying yeah we're a democracy we decide everything together and i've even said in interviews like i would never be part of a band if i wasn't able to have you know my vo voting right or my opinion mattered unless i'm a hired gun and that's a completely different ball game, and I would be completely fine with just stepping back and being. No, like, even even a hired hey, gun, you. even a hired gun, you couldn't get an email just to release somebody, you know, from a contract. You would oh. have to give a verbal warning. You'd have to go through this. You'd have to, you know, show. But anyways, I don't want. I don't know her side, so I'm not going to assume anything here. No, I'm just trying to tell you that there's certain procedures. A band is an entity. An entity is like a business. So the yeah. same sort of rules apply. That's but, how I've always seen it, and that's uh, that's how I believe a band should be run as a business and having that mindset. Like, even if people are not getting along, you can always find, like, a professional ground where you can meet and you do the job and you can still enjoy the job and then go your separate way. Like, that's just my mentality, and that's just not the same for everyone. Okay. And, and so, okay, so you're let go in an email. Yeah. And that, that seems to be has hurt you a great deal, right? Extremely. Uh, it's like someone ripped my heart out. Yeah, yeah. And, and 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 I would be too. I'd be like furious. I'd be upset, furious. Did you did you try to reach out there saying, why are you doing this? No, because I know her and there's no point. Okay. And then your friends in solidarity, they, they quit the band. <laughs> The two other ladies, uh, Mona and, uh, sorry, what's her name? Uh, Emily. And Emily. And Emily. They quit the band to join you, which, you know, which is, is a must, that, that must have made you feel great, right? That must have made uh, you feel a lot yeah. better. It does make me feel, but I also felt really guilty because, um, sorry. No, um, look. No, I, I don't want to, sorry. Um, no, okay, but... I know the opportunities that we had um, um, worked up and created together, and uh, I'm I shouldn't be doing these interviews because I'm really mentally not <laughs> ready to do these kind of things. I apologize, but um, um, okay, I felt okay. guilty. No, but let me just uh, just wrap it up. Like, I felt guilty because I knew the opportunities that they were letting they were giving up because of this but they had their own reasons and me being um you know like I had nothing to like they did this completely on their own and the the problems that we've had in the band they they're not just something that is between her and I it's like something that's been brewing and been there always and so when when this happened, they also felt that it was very disrespectful towards them, being that they believed that we were a democracy and that we yeah. had a say in these things. When she came, because she did more or less tell them, I want to do this and I've already found a new singer. And that's when Emily just said, I, I don't want to play with another singer. And if you're going to go ahead and do this, I'm going to leave the band. And that's what she did. So... And Emily and Mona felt the same way. So, well, that's I think that's, I, that, that, I, that yeah. is a nice thing, you know, like out of uh, uh, for for two others to uh, join you like that. I think that's wonderful. It, it I think I, about... I love them and I'm forever grateful. I, I you know, I, I wouldn't have expected anything, but I also feel like I'm so blessed. And honestly, I'm 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 so incredibly grateful that they they are my new band and they are the two that I enjoy working with. And I have so much fun with them. And we already had two songwriting days and we had just so much fun and it was drama free. And it was just, 
it was just a dream and it was just like this is what a band is supposed to be and i and, and I, I mean trust me we've been um i've meant lite yeah it's not i'm gonna we have dinner soon um no but we've had uh, our differences because that's how friends you know if you don't fight with your family and friends i mean that's kind of weird in itself and we have but we always um we say sorry and we move past it and get and our relationships always grow stronger and stronger and stronger and that's i think the testament of a you know real solid like healthy relationship and that's how it is with them so i'm i'm really grateful that we have something and that we get to continue yeah. playing together so you're going to write some new music yes you're going to try to get a, a new album out there yes you're gonna play, try to do some shows together, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yes. All right, so you're gonna kick some butt. That's okay. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm. You know, I couldn't ask for better player. Like, I, I have so much fun with them, and they are so incredibly talented. And you know, both of them are really like high educate, highly educated musicians. Like, they both went to university. You know, like they're just like crazy good musicians, and. um it's going to be fun. Like it's really, it's already so much fun. Like I'm already feeling like a stone has lifted. Like I'm excited for the future. And I also think that whatever happened between me and Filippo, whatever, you know what? I think it's for the better for both of us. She gets to play with people that she enjoys to be with and be in a setting that she's going to, you know, feel satisfied and happy. And I get to do the same thing. Yes. Um, the only difference is that we need to you know, find a band name and, you know, build something. Father, new. something with father in it, I think. We're, I think we're going to avoid... Rain father uh, or... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think we're going to avoid anything... Anything... Uh, Paternal, you maternal. You know, weather related. I think we're going to leave that to the girls there and then we're going to have to start something See, fresh and new. It, it is good you're doing interviews. I'll tell you why. Because now you can use this as your platform to get labels, you know, to get you guys signed if you're not already signed, to get management, to yeah. uh, get your name out there. So use the opportunity. I hope so. I hope so. Well, now I, look, I mean, you have me. Like you have yeah. me sort of on your side. So it's, it's well, good. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I, you I, I, like I said in the interviews that I've done so far, I don't want people to pick a side. You don't have to pick a side. You, you can don't have enjoy to two great bands. Yes. And they're going to be killing it on their side. And I'm hoping that we're going to be killing it on our side and get to that level that we managed to get Thunder Mother. You know, I want to get there and beyond. So I'm I'm excited for the future. Um, I'm excited too. And you know what? Uh, seize the day. Seize the opportunity. I'm going to show your uh, in Inception. That was your solo, yeah. right? Inception. I'm, I'm going to put that up there and uh, yeah. just quickly leave off with Inception. You want to tell people about that? Can I, yeah, but can, can I just say one last thing, though? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, because people have been writing to me and been pretty negative. Like most, I would say 99% have been really positive and supportive. But some people feel that I, by telling my truth, that I am doing something wrong and, uh, you know, bashing them, which... I just want to make it clear that that's like not my intention at all. I just, you're asking questions and I'm a very honest person and, I, and it's, I can't not give you my truth. But uh, with that, yeah. I don't have any intention of making it seem like they're well, bad I, people I, or anything. I don't wish, I, I wish, like, I wish Thunder Mother all the success in the future. I don't mean yeah. any badness towards them. No, but neither. So people nothing, need to understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah people I agree. need to and, just and I understand that. that. But yes, Inception is my first single. As a solo mm -hmm. artist, um, it's, I guess, more commercial rock. Uh, I wrote it with Emily, the drummer in Thunder, or pre, well, my drummer now, well, our drum, we're, I don't know how, what is, yeah. Emily mm -hmm. Johansson, me and our friend Johan, Johan Randian wrote Inception together, and it's about the beginning, so it kind of feels like a fitting song. <laughs> So it's just a single right now, right? It's That's just it. a single, yeah. I have my next single ready to go, but I need to just uh, set a date for it, and yeah. It's not conception, is it? Ah, no, it's not conception. <laughs> but I can give you the name of it. Go ahead. Uh, um. Well, I wrote this song before I got fired, obviously, and I didn't know this uh, shitstorm was gonna happen. But I did write a song called MVP, which is kind of hilarious right now. Um. 
and it's about i mean if you listen to the lyrics it's just about like I can be the best at my in my position and you can be the best like trying to it's just like a motivational pump you know happy song that you know we can all be the best kind of good. thing good for you <laughs> well listen yeah. congratulations a single is like some super powerful singing there thank you uh, you know uh you know keep us posted on you know the latest developments on your bad name yes you i'm have curious to see what it's going to sound like <laughs> i'm curious to see what the name is going to be no yeah. father mother sister brother in the name we know that no rain no weather related no weather related but, no no uh and, and also we're gonna be playing the songs that we wrote so uh, that, of course we already have like a, a lot of great material from the album black and gold for example so yeah i'm excited to to do that in our i guess and yeah play them again <laughs> all right thank you very much for being a guest i'm gonna go eat now too yeah dinner time okay well, <laughs> all right talk to for you <laughs> Lunch. Bye bye. All right. Have yourself well, a great have day. A, have a lovely day.